Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are three weeks out from Ironman Chattanooga and today we just wanted to share 10 things that we think are really good to be thinking about if you haven't already nailed them down in preparation for the race. So Caleb did Ironman Chattanooga last year and we are both doing it this year. So I did not do it last year, but I did the day the athlete guide came out. I printed it off and I read the entire thing. And I geek out over this kind of stuff. Let's be honest, Katie's my coordinator. She makes sure that I'm everywhere that I'm supposed to be. So she probably knew the athlete guide better than I did and kept me on, on schedule. I don't know about that, but we do enjoy talking about this kind of stuff. So Caleb's gonna give the perspective of somebody who's done it and I'll bring the perspective of somebody who was there, didn't actually participate, but I am this year. So we're really looking forward to it. So here are 10 things that we think are helpful to have nailed down or at least be thinking about three weeks out from Chattanooga. Number one is arrival and check-in. So check-in begins, if it's the same as last year, check-in begins Thursday at noon but you have to be checked in by Friday at 5 p.m. There's no Saturday check-in and there's no race day check-in. So with it being a Sunday race, that kind of throws people off, I think, a little bit. Like we had someone who didn't realize that you had to check in by Friday, so by Friday. So here's the scoop. If you check in earlier, you get the perks of having your bike in a better spot and more merch to choose from. However, downside is if you have a job or if you have kids, logistics, it can be difficult. So you just have to weigh that out for yourself and decide when you want to get there, but know that it has to be before Friday at five. Yeah, so typically, this is how it's been in the past. This is all a caveat with what we've experienced, not necessarily what it will be this year, but the closest bike spaces, it starts with one, two, three, four, all the way up at like close to where the bike start is. So the earlier you get registered, the lower the number you get, the closer your bike space is. That's a helpful thing. The other thing is, like you mentioned, the, the coveted t-shirt with everybody's names on the back, like that's a hot commodity and they typically sell out and they might even sell out the, the first day. So. Those are things that like, if you know that you want to get one of those and you're gonna be heartbroken if you don't get it, that might mean that you need to be there early or have somebody else get that for you. Yeah, so speaking of merch, point number two is to think through your budget and think about what are the things that you really wanna get. So when you walk in to check in, you actually go first through the tent with all the merch. So it's like right there, that's the first thing that you see. And it can be a little bit overwhelming, they've got hoodies and shirts and magnets and hats and yeah. water bottles. Things and that you would expect to see. And then there's a ton of things like backpacks and bike jerseys and things yeah. that you may not expect to see. Roka has a huge setup there. Hoka has a lot of shoes there. And yeah. so there's, there's a lot of things that are Ironman Chattanooga specific. And then a lot of things that are just um, their sponsors having a, a nice display up. So think about what you want to, to get and have an idea in your mind it, or it can be overwhelming and then you end up with something that you didn't want and yeah. you didn't get something that you really wish that you had. So it's, a, it's good to kind of have an idea of what you want going into it. Okay, so next up is to think about what your weekend schedule is going to look like. So there is a lot that needs to be packed into that time. So just thinking through there's athlete briefings, if you wanna do any kind of shakeout, swim, bike, run, if you want to drive the bike course, if you want to bike the run course, um, just all of the things, you need to have time to lay out all of your gear, get all your stuff organized, there's just a lot going on. Then in addition to if you have friends and family who are there to see you, you wanna spend time with them. So it's just a good idea to kind of, either on a piece of paper or an Excel sheet or whatever it is for you to just map out after you look at the athlete guide and look at the schedule there just kind of map out what the days are going to look like for you that way the night before the race you are not scrambling trying to get everything together because really you need to go to bed early that night and not be staying up late trying to put stickers on your bike and your helmet and all that and we've done that before we learned that's not fun that's not how you want to 
start off the night before your race. So just have a game plan for what the weekend's gonna look like. Yeah, I, the probably one of the most helpful things for me was driving the bike course last year. With the bike course changing this year, that's something that will definitely be on our schedule is just laying eyes and kind of knowing what to expect and where to expect it on the bike course and the run course. Everyone talks about Barton and how tough Barton is. And so like I would recommend like setting some time aside to drive over over the river to drive up Barton or walk up Barton and have an idea of like, okay, this is what to expect. Either it's not as bad as I thought or I kind of wish that I hadn't seen it. <laughs> but either way, I think it's, it's helpful. So like Katie said, mapping it out. And um, this is the part where like, even when you map it out, it may feel like you've got a lot of downtime in there, but I can assure you that the weekend will fly by like a blur. So um, just try to make sure that you get everything in. The last thing you want is to wake up on race morning and think, oh man, I forgot to do, uh, I forgot to go drive the course or I forgot to do this that I wish I had. So as you were planning your weekend and mapping things out, one thing you obviously want to figure out is your food. So that's something really helpful to think through in advance is, do you have a kitchen? Are you gonna cook? Do you need to go to the grocery store? Are you gonna be going out to restaurants? And if you are going to restaurants, spend a little time researching, especially if you have dietary restrictions. So some of our favorites from last year were um, high carb options like Tony's and Melon Mushroom and you loved Ruby Sunshine Ruby for Sunshine, their pancakes. Breakfasts are the best. So there's all, I mean, there's a ton of different recommendations, but one thing also to know is if it's the same as last year, in the check-in bag, there was actually a voucher for, do you remember how much it was? $20 maybe? To, and there was a list of like local restaurants. So Tony's was one of the restaurants that we went to for dinner and really enjoyed their pasta. So just kind of think through your meals, what your high carb options are gonna be. And if you need to make reservations, if you have a big party, that kind of stuff is just helpful to think through the things. Okay, so number five is your race day attire. So what are you gonna wear? Are you going to need your wetsuit? Who knows, right? Every year it's kind of been a like morning of it's right there on the boarding decision. line. So if you have a wetsuit, definitely bring it. That will be a morning of decision. Then thinking through what are you going to wear on the bike? What are you going to wear on the run? Are you gonna do a full change? That's been a really big one for me that I've really struggled with is Am I gonna keep the tri suit on? Am I gonna do a full change before the run? So just kind of think through, weigh that out, weigh the pros and cons. That's a big one. Yeah, I saw like a really helpful tip on the Facebook group where someone had laid out extra large Ziploc bags ahead of time. So before you even get to Chattanooga and she had written on there like her bike bag, run bag, and had everything listed out on the actual Ziploc bag. And so I think like as you think about what you're going to need, it may be helpful to go ahead and lay it out to figure out like are there things that you still need to buy. Katie wants to buy a fresh pair of socks for the race. I mean, everybody loves running in new socks, just like running in new shoes. So enjoy your new socks. But think about what you're going to need and go ahead and have those things like start making a mental list and even laying things out. Never hurts to work, at, work ahead and be early. Yeah, and speaking of things that you will need, next up, really huge thing is nutrition. So hopefully you have been practicing and already have nailed down what you're going to use on race day because you've been practicing, but there's a lot to think through that one with it being such a long ride and now with the um, Ironman switching to mortal hydration, knowing mortal hydration is a lot less carbs than what most of us I think are used to training with. And I've also read that it is going to be a watered down version giving, given out on the course. I don't know the accuracy of that, but I did, I did hear somebody say that. So just thinking through, okay, what are you gonna have, especially on the bike, cause that's so long. Where are you gonna put it? Are you gonna put things in your pockets? Do you have a bento box? Are you gonna have enough bottle cages for all your bottles? Are you gonna have to put some in your special needs bag? Right. If you are putting bottles in your special needs bag, how are you gonna keep them cool? So just a lot to think about that logistically as you're working through your nutrition plan. The night before the race is not the time to be trying to figure out what you're gonna do. So make a plan, stick to it, 
I'm not one of the firm believers of nothing new on race day, so I think you can do it. I am nothing new on race day. <laughs> okay, so if you have friends and family who are coming along, think about what you need from them. So last year, Caleb had like a pacing chart that he printed off and he wanted me to tell him how fast he needed to run in order to meet his goal based on... Yeah, so my goal was a 12 hour Ironman. And so I had no idea what the swim or the bike was gonna be. And so I just needed to know if I got off of the bike at this time, what pace do I need to run to achieve the 12 hour mark? And that was, that was what I needed from Katie. Yeah, so I knew, okay, when I see Caleb, this is what he wants me to tell him. And you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you were so much faster. I was faster. He so did. No. He kept asking, what is a four hour marathon? What pace no, is it? A five that? hour marathon. Oh. It was something crazy. It was something crazy like that. But it wasn't even on the chart. And she was like, it's not on the chart. Just run. You'll be fine. <laughs> so. And this year we have friends who are coming. And the big thing that we want them to tell us is how far apart are we? Yeah. How much room do I have, or how fast do I need to run to catch up yeah. to Katie? How fast do I need to run to to beat Caleb? So that's that's what our friends will be telling us. So Jeremy and Kim, I'm gonna pay y'all money to <laughs> lie to her to make sure that she doesn't catch up. So think about family and friends. What do you need from them? Is there just something that you need them to tell you? Like, what is it? And where do you want them to be? And um, I made a whole nother video, if you wanna check that one out, about spectating tips, so that your family and friends know where the best spots to be, where they can see you on the run course. So, so if you wanna see that video, just click right up here. Okay, so speaking of um, the run course and uh, where you need people and what you need, the other thing that we suggest you go ahead and be thinking about is your mental preparation. So when it gets tough and you are out there, what are you going to tell yourself to push through and keep going and don't give up? Whatever it is, and if you need like something, like find some inspirational songs or videos or something and just go ahead and start like memorizing it and just keep telling it to yourself so that when it's tough and it's on race day, You've already got it memorized, it's up in here, and you just keep hearing it in your head to yourself. Yeah, last year for me, it was to the glory of God alone, and that was what I just kept telling myself, was this is why I'm doing it, and that kept me moving. And then also, I had a lot of people reach out and show support the night before, and I just kept thinking, like, I don't, I don't wanna let them down because they were cheering for me and rooting for me, and so I wanted to be proud of what I was able to go back and tell them that I'd achieved. So yeah. this year, do you have anything that's kind of resonated in your mind that you're, are you still kind of figuring out what it is? I don't, one of mine that's just kind of always stuck, obviously, like I said, I've never done an Ironman before, but I've done marathons before. And one that has always stuck with me is that the race is the celebration of all the hard work that you've already put in. And I feel like that has been really true for me with this training block. Like I've said so many times to Caleb, like, the training feels so much harder than what the race is actually like. The, just the hours and the continuous yeah, mornings of getting up early and just all the hard work that goes into it. That like the Ironman just, I know it's going to be hard work, but as an outsider looking, it looks like so much fun. And so just reminding myself, this is fun. This is fun, right? This, this is, is fun. fun. Right? This is the party. This is the celebration of all the hard work that's already gone into it. And so just enjoying the day. Yeah, I think for me, it's just proving them wrong. And we were laughing about this the other day that like nobody's really doubting me or coming out saying like, you can't do this. So it it's, seems kind of ironic that there's really nobody saying that. So I don't really have anybody to prove wrong, but it's more of like the self doubt and the mm -hmm. self talk yeah. that like I can let those thoughts creep in or I can prove those thoughts wrong and I can prove that I can do this. Okay, another thing that's really helpful to think about is after the race, your post-race gear management. So when you finish, I think a lot of us think about like the race and everything that goes into the race and then once we cross the finish line, it's like all, all the planning's done, I'm done, I did the hard part. But you still have all of your gear. And last year I remember we saw a couple people that were riding their bikes back to their hotel and they had like all their bags like just tied like over their loaded shoulders, like a pack yeah. mule and I just felt so bad for them because so I was like, that looks miserable. 
So if you have family or friends, you can actually give them a little card and they can pick up your bike and other bags too, all right? Bags. They can pick up all of your stuff for you so that you don't even have to worry about that. So if you have friends or family, that's a great way that they can help you or you can at least kind of all go do it together. That's what we ended up doing is yep. we were at the finish line and then we walked over together and Caleb rolled his bike and I carried his bags. And so just if you have some people who can help you, it's good to go ahead and like give them a heads up. Hey, let's do this part together. The beauty of that too is um, I think it might even start at like six o'clock where they can pick up and so you may not even be close to finish mm -hmm. and they can go ahead and have your bags and bike already put back in the you know on the car or in the room or something so that's a nice little perk if you can talk them into doing that that way when you finish the finish the race and can't walk you don't have to try and pedal your bike three or four blocks so yeah and finally, and this is a really fun one to end on. One of my favorites. Is what is your post-race treat? So we try not to eat a whole lot of sugar and have tried to eat pretty healthy this whole training block. But after race day, we are going to eat whatever we want and we're just gonna celebrate and enjoy. So something that uh, I have been told is think about what you're craving like on your long bike rides and that's probably what you will want after the race and so I think you told me that. So my treat that I got this week at the grocery store is I'm gonna want a cold Sprite and some Twizzlers. So I'm gonna be thinking about while I'm on the bike and while I'm on the run my post-race treat that is gonna be waiting on me. The and sprite, yours? Sprite sounds great but you can have all the Twizzlers <laughs> I'll pass. I might eat the whole package. Nutter butter cookies, like the cookies that are shaped like a peanut with the peanut butter cream filling. That sounds like a special treat for me. So I will be looking forward to that. I might enjoy a Sprite also. So if you see us after the race walking around with our Sprite and Twizzlers and Nutter Butter car bars, please come say hello. I'll share one with you. And let us know if you have made it to this far in the video, drop a comment below. Let us know what is your post-race treat. We would love to hear from you. What are you looking forward to most? Yep. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully we'll have one or two more videos coming out before the race of just tips and general thoughts about uh, leading up to Ironman Chattanooga. We are so excited. We've got one more big bike ride this weekend. And then uh, a semi taper. It was not really a taper, but we're excited about it and cannot wait to get to Chattanooga. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.